Hello everybody. In today's video, I will be explaining the geometry behind a solar eclipse. This is an exciting time for many of us as we will be traveling, I know I will, to I'm going to Texas to see the total solar eclipse. And this is a rare opportunity. The last one we had was seven years ago. And this one is going to be happening one week from today, April 8th, 2024. The eclipse will begin in Mazatlan, Mexico, the western shore of Mexico. It's going to move to the northeast, up through Texas, Arkansas, through several other states, including uh, eventually into Ohio, upstate New York, Vermont, Maine, and then through the provinces of Canada. How long will it take for the eclipse to move that whole path? Only an hour and a half. It will be traveling at about twice the speed of sound. 1600 miles per hour. Now, what I would like to first start with here to understand how the solar eclipse works is I would like to compare the sun and the moon. So here is my moon or my model of the moon. And if we look at this as you see it right now, it looks approximately like the moon is about a quarter of the size of the sun. Of course, this is not to scale in reality the moon is approximately one four hundredth the size of the sun. So I'm now going to take the moon and I'm going to move it towards you in the camera. I'm going to move the moon towards you and you can just observe what happens. This perhaps is not a surprise because what you end up seeing is that the moon gets larger. And if you look at this right now, uh, I'm trying to make it so it's roughly so that the moon and the sun appear to be, for you, about the same size. So it turns out that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. But it's not 400 times further, it's a little closer. So what does that mean? That means normally the sun actually is slightly larger in the sky. If you go from the bottom of the sun to the top of the sun in, in the sky, how much of an angle is that? It turns out to be about a half a degree. That half a degree of what we call the angular size of the sun, also we can look at that as thinking that we could have 360 suns through the, all across the sky from one horizon to the other, 360 suns side by side, if you can imagine that. And it turns out that the moon normally is very slightly smaller than that. I believe that this is something of a miracle, that these two bodies, these two largest bodies in our sky, the sun and the moon, are almost exactly the same size. It's really quite extraordinary. But usually the moon is slightly smaller than the sun. But sometimes as the moon has its orbit around the earth, it is very slightly closer to the earth than it is at other times. So sometimes the moon's apparent size in the sky is a little bit larger. So now what I am going to show you is what happens when the moon passes directly in front of the sun. This is a very rare event and that's what an eclipse is. And so here comes the moon. It's going to pass directly in front of the sun and as it did so, I'll reverse that a little bit, as it did so, it doesn't completely obscure the sun. Because why? Well, the moon is slightly smaller in the sky than the sun. This is called an annular eclipse. An annular eclipse is actually more common than a total solar eclipse. It's when the moon is a little too small to completely obscure the sun. I will show you now an example of what happens, and this is what happens when you're on the Earth, when the moon happens to pass in front of the sun. So in this case, what we're going to see is the moon is a little bit larger, it's a little bit closer to you, the viewer, and it's going to cross 
directly in front of the sun and completely obscure it for a little bit of time. So now I'm going to talk about the geometry of the eclipse as it would be viewed from space. If you were looking from space down in the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. So I'm going to hold up the Moon here. And we have the Moon and the Sun. And there's a shadow that's cast. You can't see the shadow. Normally we think of a shadow cast onto a floor or onto a two-dimensional surface. In this case, I want to picture that there is a shadow, even though you can't see it, but it's in space behind the moon towards me. So it's where you would be, where you would be located if you were perhaps on a spaceship and you were behind the moon. You would be in the shadow if you were behind the moon and you couldn't see the sun. And so that's really what we want to picture, is there is a shadow in the shape of a cone, a three-dimensional space where you would be located where you couldn't see the sun because you were behind the moon in its shadow. So now what we are going to see is that the shadow of the moon is going to fall upon the earth. And I think you can see that shadow now. And so what we're really looking at in terms of geometry is a cone-shaped shadow, a conical shadow in space is now intersecting with a sphere, the Earth. And that shape of the intersection between the sphere and the cone, well, it almost looks like a circle. It's very close to a circle, but it's actually not a perfect circle. And watch what we can now see if we see that shadow the shadow of the eclipse moving across the Earth. And that is how the solar eclipse's shadow moves across the Earth. Let me show you that one more time. Here it is, the shadow moving across the Earth. How big is that shadow in reality? Of course, it was greatly exaggerated on this model of the Earth here. If you were standing in that shadow, you would see what we saw earlier, that the moon is going in front of the sun to eclipse the light of the sun. If you happen to be located in that shadow, that's called the path of totality as that shadow moves across the Earth. And that, that circle, almost circle, that shadow of the moon on the Earth is approximately 100 miles in diameter. And that's the thing that moves across, as I spoke earlier, it moves across the Earth from the western side of Mexico to the eastern side of Canada in an hour and a half at approximately 1,600 miles per hour. And that is the geometry of the eclipse.